Cracking the Code viewers, summer is once again nearly upon us. And though your thoughts may be more concerned with firing up the propane tank and donning your water wings, we would like to remind you of your six string responsibilities with an awesome offer from Cracking the Code. Namely, we are offering you a free seven day trial membership to the awesome Cracking the Code platform with complete and unfettered access to everything we've made. How do you access this amazing offer? Well, you just go to troygrady.com forward slash summer. Once again, it's troygrady.com forward slash summer. Sign up for a membership. If you were to cancel within the first seven days, we will not charge you not even a nickel. And I do mean that. I really hate scammy weird things. <laughs> you can quit in seven days and we won't charge you anything, but at least you've had a chance to check out all the stuff we've been working on. And that's really what this is about. We get stuck in our own little bubble sometimes, especially when we're working on tech projects. And that's particularly true of all the work we've been doing on the platform over the last year, year and a half. We've spent honestly, massive amounts of time re-architecting the way that we display all of our stuff because there really wasn't a way to do it that was easily or otherwise available. There was no plug it in, turn it on way to display thousands of musical examples and these strange multi-camera technical things that we do because a Cracking the Code interview really isn't a traditional interview. Yeah, you've got your one or two hour conversation, but that can easily generate hundreds of other supporting elements namely the musical examples, which we painstakingly extract, name, filter, sort, and then reattach back to the interview at the times where they occurred. So if you check out any of our interview pages, for example, you will see the timeline below the interview, and you can click on any of the timestamps. That will take you to the moment in the interview when that musical piece happens. You can then click on the title of the clip to go to the clip page. You'll see the notation. You can then also switch the speed, flip it into slow motion and get that super surgical view. It's very cool. It is also very labor intensive. So you might reasonably ask, you know, why do we go to all this trouble? Like, why do we do all this stuff? And here's this, the situation is that we live in a time now where we're rapidly accumulating massive amounts of stuff. Cameras are rolling 24 seven. There is no shortage of stuff to watch. The hard part is finding it all. So it would be cool if you could search inside of a movie and find like all the chase scenes or all the time travel scenes. And that would be fun maybe perhaps not necessary for your entertainment purposes. But if you're talking about building a learning platform or a knowledge base, finding stuff is like the number one name of the game. So when we take out these examples, we're not just providing a way to look at tablature. That's cool, like no doubt, and it's useful. But what we're really doing is we're making that moment discoverable. We're extracting it from the monolith. So it's no longer just this big block of stuff and you don't know what's in there. We're now saying, okay, this is a time in our conversation when an important thing happened. We give it a name, we make it searchable, we put it on its own page with these video controls where you can flip the camera angle or flip the recording into the slow motion mode and actually get the higher frame rate, 120 frames per second view of things. And we did this because that's the way we want the platform to be used. We wanted to not just create a way to watch videos. We wanted to create a learning tool or a research tool. And every time someone goes on our forum, we have one of the subscribers, we'll post a thread and say, hey, I was watching the Molly Tuttle interview and there's this moment where she says X, Y, Z thing and here's the example and they paste in the link to the clip page. Every time somebody does that, I am instantly just, uh, I am sort of humbly gratified that people are using the thing that we made in exactly the way we intended it to be used, even when they're using it to point out that I'm wrong about <laughs> something, which happens all the time. Hey, you said, you know, the arm's not supposed to move in a particular way, you know, but here we can see that Molly's doing a thing. And I'm like, yeah, yes, <laughs> you're right. But that's awesome. To me, that is exactly why we built this thing. I'm not going to know everything. No single person is going to know everything. But together, we can sort of stumble towards greatness by figuring out or arriving at better ways of doing things, better ways of understanding things, better ways of teaching things. 
a moment like this, another great moment happened recently when the amazing Andy Wood stopped by for a couple days of live broadcasts. You can catch some of that on the YouTube channel. What you won't get on the channel, though, are the edited sequences of these things where we extracted all the, the musical examples. There was a moment in the acoustic conversation where I asked Andy about the cross-picking motion that he uses to play the bluegrass standard Jerusalem Ridge. Because Andy is awesome, one of the reasons he's awesome is that even though he didn't learn technique perhaps the way that we're trying to, he instantly gets what it is we need to know, the rest of us, about what he's doing and he extrapolates from that and then answers the question one step further. So I asked him about this picking motion and then he proceeds to demo it on every string without changing the anchor point, specifically so that we can see how the form changes as he, mo as he moves from the bass strings to the treble strings. Perfect answer to the question that I asked. And to me, that's worthy of focus. So when I was editing the interview, I pulled out that moment. I made it a musical clip, or made it a clip example. So if you hit the platform right now and you go to interviews and you go to the Andy Wood workshop, click in the acoustic workshop and you'll see the Jerusalem motion clip. You can click on it and you can watch him do this, move across the strings. And, now can you... and then you can flip it over into slow motion and you just get this perfectly clear view of everything he's doing. You've got your anchor point, you've got your grip, you've got the motion path that the pick is tracing. Andy is so great because he gets it. Like he, he's playing to the camera, even that camera is six inches away from his hand and, and it's not a camera, it's a phone, right? But that, that moment is a thing that we then made it into a musical clip so you can find it, not again, because I expect that you're gonna practice that, but because it gives you a really easy way to see something with clarity and then compare it to similar examples in, in other interviews that we've done. In similar fashion, we had Martin Miller stop by again recently. We had a really great conversation about Martin's incredible cross-picking motion. We got some really great up-close shots of this. We talked about Martin's experience becoming more aware of this motion and also the successes he's been having in actually okay, teaching so this, which is interesting. We're still working on that one. We will get that up on the platform soon. We also have Oz Noy coming up. All right, let's rock. Which is a fascinating conversation about the way that a person can combine complicated physical things like alternate picking and sweeping according to complicated formulas, but do it at an intuitive level. When I do that... Then uh, we also have the one and only amazing Frank Gambali. I met Frank 10 years ago. He was one of the first interviews that I did when I was still doing this as a hobby with the original rig that I developed. We caught up with Frank again recently. And to see this, Frank's truly pioneering sweeping approach with the new gears is really kind of a transformative experience. I have to say, without exaggeration, it is always a complete privilege to sit down with players of this caliber who are so forthcoming and um, unguarded about the magic that they work in, in terms of letting the rest of us just catch a little bit of a glimpse of it. I grew up with cassettes and VHS tapes and like magazines and these things were fine for the time. I'd never thought there would be anything better than that. And it, it thrills me to live in a time when this sort of thing is even possible, let alone be the one that's actually doing it. And that's the point of our little uh, seven day trial thingy here to give you some insight into what we've built in the sense that uh, hopefully maybe this can be useful for you too. So what's that link again? It is troygrady.com forward slash summer. Head on over, sign up for a membership, get your fingerprints all over the walls, move the furniture all around. No big deal. We'll clean it up. You know, it's that time of year. Just barbecue, get it going. <laughs> if you cancel within seven days, no harm, no foul. If you choose to stick around, you will help us stick around. So once again, from everybody here at Cracking the Code, happy summer. And as always, thanks so much for watching all the stuff we make.